Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening. I am Gage Samoji, he's Emerson Hip, and this is the Intoxicated Sports Report. Nice shirt, dude. Thanks. That thing's looking fresh. It's, uh, I don't wear it all the time. Looks like it was just pressed. No, you can tell it's kind of <laughs> cracking right there. Yeah. But it this, does look nice. These are my favorite of the two shirts. Gotcha. It is a nice, good, clean nice. black look. Yeah. Can't yeah, go wrong. Repped it at work. No one asked about it. Be nice, I still repped it. Yeah. Speaking of shirts, we got new ones yes. coming. Yes. So let us know what you want. What size? What size? Twenty dollars a piece. Because we already have the design. Mm -hmm. As some of you might have already seen. Yep. If you follow us on Instagram, you've definitely seen it. Uh, if you don't like it, tough. We do. Mm -hmm. So it is a different material. It's going to be a tri blend, so softer, softer material. So it's going to be different from the previous two. That's right. The other ones were, I think, both went 100% cotton. Yeah? Yeah, huh. pretty sure. That one, this one or no, no, the gray one might be a, a slight poly mix, but uh, mostly cotton. That one, I think, is 100% cotton. Oh. Oh. What do you got there, partner? I got a Sonoma Springs Brewing Company beer called Batch 51. They make it's good beer. Hazy IPA, alcohol percentage is 6.3. It's a pint and the IBU, which I'm not really sure about. Is forty two. I don't know what the scale is. Uh, that's the um, like the, it's called like international bitter units or something like that. Just I look, look for the alcohol content. Yeah, the IBUs. I don't really care. There, about. there are beer nerds out there that say that the IBUs don't exactly tell you how bitter it is. Like oh, okay. your taste buds will tell you how bitter it gotcha. is. Gotcha. Yeah. How about yourself? What do you got going? Um, vodka Red Bull. Yeah. Just trying to kick it up a notch. There you go. There, goes. there were definitely some cobwebs for us about an hour ago. Yes. Yeah. We were we were about ready to. Pass out. It is 7.06 on this Tuesday, March the 22nd. Yep. Of 2022. We're, yeah, we're starting off late today. Mm -hmm. You know, last week was nice because I wasn't working on the Monday. Right. And we started at like 5. Yep. We actually started at 5. Yeah, you got here early and we started still at 5. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's kind of funky with the sun still just creeping down. Yeah. So it feels earlier than it is. It's nice to look out and see light still though. Yeah. A little bit. Yep. So. Can I taste this? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I can't remember if I bought these or not. They are good. Ooh, that is tasty. I think I've talked about hazies before. I could have a couple. I can't drink. They can be filling. I can't can like, be very you know, filling. I can't go like five deep on hazy IPAs. <laughs> I just can't. So. What do we got going on today? We got more NFL news. You know, you, you can't stop them. Yeah, they just keep <laughs> they coming. keep coming. <laughs> we got March Madness update coming. A little NBA. We have our contender rankings again. Mm-hmm. A little, bit any a, little bit, a little bit of MLB news. Yep. Some nice news for yourself mm -hmm. on that, too. And, yeah, last call as always. Yep. Uh, also, I think that's it. Right? Yep. Unless I didn't refresh this. Nope. You're good. Cool. <laughs> Got it. All right, let's start with the NFL. Are you ready for this? Yes. All right, so Matt Ryan to the Colts. I mean, does this? where does this put them in the, in the playoff picture? I think they'll be better... With him than they would with Carson Wentz. Yeah, he was, he was definitely a mixed yeah. bag. <laughs> I could see why Matt Ryan won't, would want to go to the Colts. Right, you know, you right. Jonathan Taylor. I think that's a great fit, honestly. Got a good offensive line. Mm -hmm. Pretty good defense. But... Yeah. They've always had a good roster, I feel yeah. like. So does this mean that he's going to wear Carson Wentz's number two? I'm, I'm kind of thinking he is going to wear number two, right? Yeah. It's going to be weird seeing him wear white. Because the Falcons have always been like a dark color. Like right. The Falcons jerseys have always been like a black or like dark red. Or even like when they wear the all-white uniforms, it's got like enough color on it to not... Oh, I guess they did have all white Yeah, because they, yeah, every, every team has a, a white top, at least. To me, to me, when I think of the Falcons, I think of just the black uniform. Right, yeah. You know who the last quarterback was to start for the Falcons? Who was in that, Ryan? Uh, I want to say Matt Schaub. Or maybe... Uh, definitely wasn't Michael Vick, was no. it? Um, so not Matt Schaub. Back in, like, 2007. Yeah. Um, ooh. It's tough. Like, is he relevant? You, you know who he is. Okay. He played, I'll give you a hint, he played for, he played at Oregon. Uh, oh, uh, not Joey Harrington. Yes. <laughs> really? <laughs> I didn't even know. He was the last quarterback to start for the Falcons. <laughs> I don't know, guess he like, would have fizzled out by then, but that's funny. I feel like Matt Schaub was there right before Matt Ryan, am I wrong? I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. Okay. But, you know, good for Matt Ryan. Good change of scenery. Yeah. I also feel bad for Atlanta sports fans because you lose Freddie Freeman and then you lose Matt Ryan. Yeah. To, you know, I hate to use icons, but they're, you know. Big, I mean, big time. Freddie Freeman helped them win a championship, which he will be, you know, right. a pie of statue in front of their stadium. 
Matt Ryan was a quarter away yep. from being and won an MVP that season as well. Exactly. So I like and I like Matt Ryan. He's a good guy. Yeah. At least you know I don't know him personally, but he seems he like always seems, he seems like he's a good dude. Right. Good in the media. Um, he always has really <clears throat> perfect white teeth. Yeah. Have you ever noticed that about him? He does. He's, he's like, got some chompers. He just has like some chompers. Yeah. He looks like a uh, dude in Inspector Gadget. Fake ass, like the big old white teeth. I'd have to Did you ever see, see the old one? Like yeah. The, not, not the animated one, but the one with the dude right, right. from uh, Ferris Bueller. Yeah. No, I forget what his name is. Um, but yeah, that's okay. Yeah, Matthew Broderick. Yes. Yeah. yeah the, the, he has like a, I think I've seen that movie where he has these chompers. <laughs> this reminds me of Matt Ryan. <laughs> um, what do you think about uh, Julio going to the Colts now that he's a free agent? Huh? That's just being floated. Oh, oh Julio. Julio Jones. Sorry. Did you get the Matt Ryan Julio combo again? I'm could down be, with it. Could hey. be nice. They need a receiver for sure. Do it. Yeah. I'd rather Julio go to the Cowboys. But... <laughs> um, I mean, it, it's it's funny. Like this is, I feel like a perfect fit for both sides. However, the Colts have a lot of competition in the AFC. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously the AFC West has four teams that are going to be in the mix. The AFC is getting harder by the day. Yeah. It seems. And then the the Bills and the uh, and the Bengals are still going to be good, and the Titans. Yes. It's going to be uh, interesting, and the Ravens are, are legit. And I think, is this, since Andrew Luck left, is this their six different quarterbacks? Correct. And I, I wanted to mention that I feel like, I, I, I like this move for Matt Ryan, but he's also at the very tail end of his career. He is. I just, the Colts need to decide when it's time to, to stop pussyfooting around. They need to draft a quarterback in the next two drafts. They do. Yeah. Because they've just been wasting away this pretty damn good roster with Phillip Rivers and Jacoby Brissett over the last few years. They're gonna get Arch Manning, the Colts. <laughs> That'd be cool. That'd be cool. That'd, That'd be fun. cool. <laughs> also, when are we gonna stop saying that Frank Reich is the quarterback whisperer? When he, mm. yeah, you know, no, he's not. You're right. He had Carson Wentz going for a little bit. I think Carson Wentz just completely lost his confidence. I, I like him going to the Commanders because that's the best quarterback they've had in a while. But I still, if Matt Ryan doesn't show out this year or does well, Frank Reich cannot be called the quarterback whisperer anymore. I agree with you. Because I'll, I'll give you this: Phil Rivers, <clears throat> old. Right. Old, ancient. Mm-hmm. Carson Wentz, not that old, clearly doesn't have that kind of talent. Yeah. I or just wonder if Matt Ryan is just ready to fall off a cliff, and who knows when it's going to happen. I don't think he'll fall off a cliff. We'll see. I think he'll be all right. He's getting older. Not mobile. He never has been. No. But he's been good. So. Yes. He won MVP. He did. All right. Uh, Deshaun Watson, traded to the Browns. This was... he, he picked the Browns. He did. He, he did. He was like, I want to go to Cleveland. He had four options, supposedly. Um, that's pretty wild. Uh, uh, does this, I mean, are the, are the Browns in that mix of, of good teams, or do you think this They is, have to be. Yeah. They have to be in that mix of good teams. AFC is just, <laughs> fuck, man. And it's going to be interesting to see what, what comes down with all of his civil lawsuits, and if he gets suspended or not. Yeah, I saw that he, his contract is the most guaranteed money on a single contract right, in yeah, history. So they signed him to, what, five years and $230 million, fully guaranteed. Damn. Yeah, yeah that's okay. unreal. Unreal. That's also, a lot of faith. Also, I saw that Chris Mortensen had reported that the Browns wanted to get rid of Baker because he wanted an adult at quarterback, right? They want, they want an adult at quarterback. That's a, <laughs> and, um, that's a stretch. So, Skip Bayless tweeted, and I usually don't agree with Skip Bayless at all. Mm-hmm. He says, here's the irony. The Browns wanted an adult at quarterback, so they acquired a new face of the franchise who faces 22 civil suits from women accusing him of everything from sexual misconduct to sexual assault. Yeah. So how is that getting an adult? At that's uh, yeah, that's contradictory for sure. A little bit, right? Yep. I get that he's a better football player, yeah. but is he more of that's an, what they really want. But he's more of an adult <laughs> no. than Baker Mayfield. No. They're both a little bit childish. Baker Baker Mayfield is a married man who I think probably has a kid. Sure. That, that seems uh, that seems pretty adult to me. Yeah. I don't know about you. I think he's childish though with the media. Okay, that's fair. But. Deshaun Watson, Deshaun Watson is not any better, I don't think, <laughs> overall, as a person. <clears throat> However, I think it's ballsy the Browns gave him so much guaranteed money. I mean, that yeah, is he, wild. I mean, yeah, he's good, but he hasn't played. That in a while. is wild. He hasn't played in a while. Yep. His last season he played, he was really damn good. I mean, the Texans were bad, but he was good. So, I'm excited for his potential with the Browns. I just, it's just a weird situation with him still. And what is this? In limbo. What What does this tell future? NFL superstars or players that they can get away with bullshit. possibly get away with something that they 
you know, he might, I mean, you know, he's still going through the legal process. Right. He could get, yeah, he could get. But this, this, this is kind of just telling, like, the youth and, you know, younger, the younger generation that, you know, you could possibly get away with this and still get paid the most guaranteed money ever. Yeah. In your sport. Yeah, that is an interesting it's not, it's look. Not, it's not, I, I didn't really think about it that way, but as a odd it's, look. It's not a good look for the NFL. No. It just proves to me that the NFL doesn't give a fuck about any of those 22 women. Mm -hmm. And they only care about themselves. And I get it. They're a business. But it's just not, it's, where's the ethic? Where's right. the, where, are the, where are the ethics at? A little odd. A little odd, a little, for sure. It's a little weird. Uh, what do you think about the haul that the Texans got? I mean, six draft picks and three first rounders. No players, just draft picks. I mean, for a guy that was never going to play for them again, that's, not bad. that's, that's a pretty damn good package. It's not bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, first rounders don't all come the same, but no. still. That's, I think they came out pretty well, right? Where's Baker going? Fuck. It looks like Seattle, Seattle. is like his most re realistic. You know. Seattle. And obviously, the Texans don't want him because they didn't uh, ask for him in return. Yeah. So that's not an option. Seattle. I think it's Seattle and Carolina. I'd rather have Baker Mayfield than Drew Locke. I think so. Yeah, I think so for sure. Yeah. yeah it's got to be either Seattle, maybe even Carolina, but I think Seattle's probably. Yeah. And if he plays in Carolina, they're probably going to still have the quarterback competition between him and Darnold. Yeah, I don't know. Who do you like more between him and Darnold, really? I think I'd go Baker. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd go Baker. I think. I feel like Carolina I think it's, lost. I think, it's a, I think it's a wash. Yeah, I think Carolina lost all faith in Sam Darnold at some point last year. I don't really know why. I mean, he didn't play great, but yeah. they just they seem to kind of give up. I think once McCaffrey went down, they're like, we, you know, we're, right? Why why risk getting this guy killed? Yeah, exactly, so. <laughs> all right, the, I think this is the biggest news of the week. Devontae Adams traded to the Raiders. How's Aaron Rodgers feeling right now? <laughs> How you feeling? Uh, yeah, I think this is definitely a big fuck you from the Packers. <laughs> To Aaron, but hey, he got what he wanted. He got his money. He's hurting though. He he doesn't. He didn't like this news. Yeah. There is no way he loved Devontae <clears throat> Adams. That was his. That was probably. I think you could argue Devontae Adams was his best connection he's ever had with a receiver. He said it's the best player he's ever played with. Yeah. I think Aaron Rodgers said that this yeah. is the best player he's ever played with in his career. That's crazy, but uh, I mean, to me, the fact that he did ask for so much money, there's no way they just said, okay, we're well, we're gonna just give you this money. He asked for that money. Yeah, and. It led to, I mean, the, the Packers had to make the, the decision. No I, think, no, I think the Packers matched it. I think the Packers were willing to match any kind of money anybody else threw up, and he didn't want to be there anymore. He didn't want yeah. to be in Green Bay anymore. Yeah. Great. I like this for Devontae because he goes back to... Playing with Carr. Playing with Carr. Yeah, I, like I didn't too. even realize that play, they played together at Fresno State until probably yeah. last week, yeah. which is, I like that. I, I think that's pretty awesome. I like those kind of stories. Yeah. I like those kind of stories. And Devontae is from the Bay Area, so he grew up a Raiders fan, which is cool as oh, well. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I didn't know, yeah, see, I didn't know that either. That's cool. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know he was from, I, well, I did know this. I forgot that he was from Palo Alto, actually. Really? Yeah. Wow. I wonder, yeah. If, you ever, he, he ever, I wonder if he got any kind of Stanford uh, offers. Uh, yeah, he may have it, and you know, it's a hard school to get into. You, you, great. I mean, I've got to yeah. say, Devontae's not a smart person. Yeah. You know, you get but to Stanford, it's... You have to have grades. There's, yes, there's you have no, to have grades. They be, make very few exceptions. I mean, even an exception is having like a 380 uh, GPA, pretty much. <laughs> That's about as nice as they Which are. is stellar if you're like a high school right. you know I mean, like, yeah. if you're a normal person. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I can't, I can't tell where I'm at on all these teams in the AFC West. So who, does this... Is this a game changer, you think, or is it just a nice piece for the Raiders? I think it's a nice piece because I just don't really trust Derek Carr to the fullest. That's fair. But he hasn't... Okay, Amari Cooper was, was a really good player. Mm. Um, I, think, I think this helps because of Darren Waller. I know he kind of struggled to stay healthy this last season. Right. They got some weapons. Yeah, Darren Waller. Hunter Renfro is like, you know, he's a reception machine. Top, top tier slot receiver. Yes. He's like a poor man's Cooper Cup. Right. Like a very poor man's Cooper Cup. Well, he's, he's like a... I mean, or, he's just another Julian Edelman. Yeah, or like those types. Wes Welker. Or Wes Welker, yeah. So that, that'll, that'll, <laughs> open it up, that'll open up for Devontae Adams. Yeah. More. I think I think their their weapons are pretty solid. They need to get Josh Jacobs healthy and, yeah. and get that running game going, but they got a, they got a chance to be really fucking good. I think it's... I think but, it's but, but, but in that division, it's going to be tough. I still, right. I still like the Chiefs are the team to beat because they've proven it the past couple years. Yeah. Just, it's going to be interesting because one of those teams has to fall out of contention at some point. Like, you can't have four teams finish over 500. No. That no. just doesn't seem realistic. I just don't. And, who, and I, I kind of feel like the Chargers are, the, are maybe the weakest link out of all at this point. Yeah. The Raiders, I, I would say the Chargers, but still the Raiders, this, this helps. This, yeah. This but, nice. you know, the Raiders have been, like, like not. I mean, they made the playoffs. They're just, yeah, they're very inconsistent, though. Exactly. Yeah. It's like. 
you probably ask any Raider fan, you know, they, they bring you up early in the season, right? And then just halfway, the then know. midway towards the end, they just really just break yeah. your hearts. I'm excited for Josh McDaniels to to have this kind of offense yeah. to work with, you know. Yeah, this ain't this ain't like Tim Tebow, you know. This right. ain't Josh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tim Tebow. Tebow. I was thinking about that. I was like, man, he he really flopped on that first go around, but he also fucked up big time by drafting Tim Tebow in the first round. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Raiders also picked up Chandler Jones. I thought that was pretty pretty good pickup. Yeah, That's from the really good for the defense. The Cardinals. Yeah, they basically swapped him and got rid of Ngakwe, who was a pretty decent player as well. But I think Chandler Jones has got a better track record. He is older though, so. But nice pickup for the Raiders. Him. Yeah, they're making yeah. moves. You know that that nation that they got there. The Raider Nation is feeling feeling pretty good. Feeling I'm sure. Frisky. Uh, last but not least. Von Miller is going to the Bills, and he got a six-year contract as a 33-year-old, I believe. Or he will be 33 this coming season. Do you think he finishes the contract? Out? I would be shocked. I don't think he will. I, I mean, I, I hate to assume an injury is going to happen, but I, I kind of, like, there's got to be one that just derails him, and he gets cut at some point. I respect the Bills, though, because <clears throat> they're, doing the, they're doing the win now right. mentality. I, I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of years. But if they win a championship next year, it's all worth it. Right. I think that's they're, they're, this contract was meant for the next two, maybe three years at mm-hmm. best. It's not not for the long haul. Yeah. They'll they'll bite the bullet at some point. He'll look good in that Buffalo white. Yeah, that Buffalo, the, the clean, one of the cleanest jerseys in. That they, they I think the they're my favorite right now. They're good. I'd have to look at all of them again, but I think they're probably number one. They're not the cowboy white, but they're pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Uh, you had one other thing you wanted to mention, right? Uh, did I? I don't know. I can't remember. <laughs> uh, let me check. Um, no, I didn't. Oh, Juju? <laughs> Juju's going to the Chiefs? Juju's going to the Chiefs. <laughs> so, I mean, Tim and Jackson, the home, is about to be, you know, TikTok. Just TikTok Central. Yeah. Stay tuned on TikTok. Like I'm, not on, I'm not on TikTok. I don't think you are. Nope. But they will be. Yeah. So, look out for them. <laughs> the biggest TikTok horse in all of sports. One of them doesn't even play. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one rides the coattails of his bro. <laughs> exactly. All right. On to the, the tournament, March Madness. Dude, Have you been know. watching? Uh, not a lot. Because on Saturday, when was, it, when was the first day? Uh, Thursday of last week. Yeah, I was working, so I wasn't able. I was checking my checking my phone. Right. I was feeling so good. I was even flexing. You know, I was, like, by, no, one was, no one was even around, I was flexing. Because you know I, mean? <laughs> I got the Notre Dame game right, which was I felt really good I about. I got that one right, too, yeah. I, I did terrible. I was, look, I was looking at my phone probably every 10 minutes. All day because of the tournament. The, and then the next day, not even close. The first day was the only day I really cared about. And that might be because I picked Kentucky to win the whole thing. <laughs> I picked Kentucky to win the whole thing. Oof. The whole thing. Oof. And what happened? They lost to fucking St. Peter's. Yikes. You know, T. Good for St. Peter's. That's yeah. cool. Love a good underdog story. They'll probably get smoked this week. Yeah, I would think so. Oh, that was tough. <laughs> yeah. I'm the only person in our pool whose team's out. Right. Yeah, tough, tough, <laughs> tough scene. <laughs> I don't even know how to put it. I, and I like I before, feel for you. And I like before that before they lost, we were texting about it, and you're like, "It was a sneaky pick, yeah, for Kentucky. <laughs> Kentucky's a sneaky pick to win the whole thing. That's a good pick." I mean, I feel like they were playing pretty good ball coming in, but they fell, they fell apart. I think the reason why I picked them to win because I read that they have like a bunch of seniors, and you know, I like which is rare. For I like experience, too. and it is rare for Calipari, Calipari, yeah. Calipari, Calipari yeah. to have. Not a lot of freshmen. Cause right. Always been I mean, they still do have their freshmen, but yeah. Oh, I felt good. I really, <clears throat> really felt good that first half of the day. And this happened, and I was like, you know what? It's done. <laughs> and you didn't even know what was going on until it was pretty much over, right? Yeah. yeah. I got a text from Devin. She was like, Kentucky lost. Suck it. <laughs> I'm like, sick. Uh, love that. Sweet. Love that. Uh, so I, I will say a lot of people were going crazy over the upsets that happened in the first round, but. Honestly, there weren't that many big ones. Obviously, Richmond, number 12 Richmond over number 5 Iowa was a decent one. But you see see 12s over 5s all the time. And uh, New Mexico State also beat UConn, another 12 over 5 matchup. I think I think UConn. Yeah, St. Peter's was the biggest one. Um, yeah. And uh, Have you seen the the pictures of what the St. Peter's court looks like, their home court? Oh, yeah, it looks like a basketball court. It looks like, like, like a high school gym. It looks like Napa High. Right. And then the Kentucky looks like the Chase Center. Yeah. I mean? It's not even it comparable. Is, it is ironic. I think I, I don't know what the exact number they came up with, but I read something that um, 
Kentucky spends like 15.7 times more on their basketball program a year than St. Peter's does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's fucking unreal. That's it's insane. And they were calling that like the biggest upset of all time. Yeah, I heard that too. That yeah. was like one of the biggest upsets of all time. Based on that. Based on that. Yeah. 11 seeds also went 3-1, and one, which is interesting. Yeah. It sucks to be a 6 seed. Because <laughs> uh, those games, like pick in a bracket, the 11 sixes are hard to pick. The right. five, even the 5 and the 12. To me, anything between like the 8-9 matchups and the 5-12 eight, matchups. 8-9 eight, 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 to me is a wash. Yeah, those are all impossible to really know. And then you always see like one, maybe two top four teams, mm -hmm. top four seeds go, go yeah. down the first round. This year's Kentucky is the lone dog. <laughs> poor guys. <laughs> that stings, man. Dude, it sucks. Yeah. It really it just sucks because in our pool, which we'll get to, like I'm done. Like, right. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish. You have you have no chance. Yeah. I also picked Tennessee to to lose them the championship, and Tennessee's. Oh, right. that like, also. Like, like, I'm I didn't done. know that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm done. It's over. Yeah. Count me out. Yeah. Second round was not short of upsets either. Baylor, number one Baylor, went down to number eight North Carolina. Yeah, That was a pretty good game. That went to overtime. Uh, Tennessee, like you said, lost to Michigan. Uh, St. Peter's is now in the Sweet 16. They beat Murray State. Murray State. Uh, and then number 11, Iowa State, over number three, Wisconsin. This one shocked me, too. Miami over Auburn. And they, they kind of blew them out. Yeah. I think they beat them by 18. So yeah, we got some uh, double-digit seeds in the in the Sweet 16. Have you been watching a lot of these games? I've been. I mean, it's been on at work, so I kind of just see uh, the scores right. a little bit here yeah. and there. Um, but uh, and then watch a little bit before going mm -hmm. into work as well. But yeah, I mean, it's been nothing. I don't think it's been anything different than we've ever seen. That. I think yeah. St. Peter's getting to the Sweet 16 is, is huge, but other, everything else, it's Kentucky. been Kentucky. Yeah, that, that's pretty rough. <laughs> I just I don't, know. I don't even know what to say about it. <laughs> I'm over, here, I'm over here not giving I don't care about college basketball all season. Right. And then Kentucky loses and I'm heartbroken. Just, yeah, Doesn't make any damn sense. <laughs> yeah, are we are we allowed to get frustrated over a I'm bracket really, that we I'm didn't really, do any research on? I'm really not frustrated. Yeah, but, but it is annoying. It's just like, damn, yeah. really? Like, this happens so quick. Yeah, because we're going to get to it, but in our pool we had how many total? I think we have we have 11 filled out brackets. 11 filled out brackets. Yeah. Six of them were Gonzaga. Yeah. Three were Arizona. And the only two that we didn't pick them is actually us two. Us two, yeah. I picked Kentucky. And you picked the Boilermakers at Purdue. Purdue. They've been looking all right. Ooh. The last game was tough, but the first game they dominated. I just didn't. <clears throat> I, I did not want to go the Gonzaga route. I could if I wanted to get points. I they I know they that. burned me last year, and I was feeling really good about it. So I was like, I kind of gave them the bird this year. I also was feeling good this year because I picked Baylor to win the whole thing, and they actually won. But oh, I didn't. But sure. I but I didn't win the pool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You lost it by like because Nick points. picked Baylor too. But I think he beat he, me. He got you like by one game in the first round or something like that. Yeah. Um, so I'm thinking to myself on Thursday, yeah, I'm pretty good this year. Right. I'm pretty good. <laughs> I, I feel like you did okay overall in the first round, like just I the did. first round matchups. I did pretty alone, yeah. right? Yeah. I had a little fire emoji thing next to my name. <laughs> on the, on, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, so yes, thank you for the 11 people that joined the bracket yes. challenge, or the other nine rather. Yeah. Um, the top three scores right now are Ashley. She got 440 points. Devin 420. And Matt, who seems to do really well in all our pools, I was going to say, <laughs> at 4 we don't even know this guy, but he's good at everything that we boast about. So shout out to yeah. Matt. We're going to have to meet this guy soon. Yes. Um, and then the top three impossible points remaining are Zoe at 1,600, myself at 1,510, which I'm proud of, and Garrett, Look at, at, 40, Garrett. at 1,460. He should be here. <laughs> That I don't give him any credit because he uh, he auto filled his bracket. Oh, did he? Did he <laughs> yeah. tell you that? Well, yeah. Did you did you hear a story? No. So he filled it out, and twice this happened. He filled it out and was getting to like the end, and his like computer or whatever he was using froze and like the, he had to refresh the app and had to start over. Bro, this happened to me twice too. Did it really? I was doing it on my phone and I clicked it off. You know, I you know I hit oh, the, the yeah like just the, like the, the cool off button. button right, yeah. And I went back to it, and none of it saved, and I'm like, are you fucking That's kidding me? Weak. It was lame. I think I did it all on my iPad. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, six, yeah, like you said, six picked Gonzaga, three Arizona. Those are the, the popular picks. Shout out to us for not going the Arizona-Gonzaga. Right? You know, I really didn't want to. I definitely didn't want to go Arizona, and I was, like, Gonzaga, I was like, you know what? These guys are probably going to show up at some point. I have them losing, I think, in the Final Four to yeah. Purdue. Okay. So, hopefully that matchup comes. Oof. Yeah, you'd, you'd probably be, you'd be getting close yeah. to win that pool. That's I, a, I did really bad in the first round. but You did. But my sweet 16 is not bad. I think I got 10 out of the 16 teams. You did season. really bad in the first round. Yeah, I, like, I only got 19 out of... Was it 19 out of 32 or something like that? Or, or yeah. 
like I'm barely over 50%. I'm probably like in the 50th percentile yeah, right I, now. I'm pretty sure I was last place after the first yeah. round. But yeah, exciting stuff. Yeah, I mean, Keep March rolling. Madness is... It's it's one of the best events on the like sports calendar, there's no question. Yeah. I, wish I, I wish that it was... <laughs> like, the games were just easier to watch, because it is rough. College basketball is tough. You know? I am interested. Yeah. I mean, especially with the the amount of NBA that we watch, it's yeah. just a much crisper game. Yeah. The guys are much more talented. Exactly. And well-rounded. Speaking of the NBA, it's yes, time sir. for our contender rankings. Woo, woo, woo. Do you have any update, updates this week? Uh, yes. yes. All right. I like it. Uh, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to, but I, I decided to do some updates myself. Yeah, I'm still, I'm still figuring this out as we go. Um, so, um, you want me to go one through five? Sure. You're still sticking with five? Yeah, I'm going to stick with five. Is five. it the same five teams, just in a different order? No. Oh, you got some traction and an addition? Yes. Wow. wow. I like it. I got the Suns at one. Okay. Bucks at two. And that was flip flop from last yes. week? Is that right? All right. I'm, you know, come out of nowhere. I'm throwing the heat in there. <laughs> okay. I, th I think I got to pay respects. I'm, I'm, I'm going backwards with the heat, but we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. I'm throwing the Celtics at four. Ooh, I like that. Because they are, I think they've, in their last 20 games, they've... They're rolling they're right rolling. now. And they're beating good teams frequently. Yeah. And then <clears> five, <throat> I'm throwing the Sixers in there. I don't like it. So you race the Warriors off? I race the Warriors off because of the Steph Curry injury. Okay. And I, and I know what's, and I hope I come back for the playoffs. Right. They're even saying you might make a couple of regular season yeah. games, okay. but that's up in the air. And I, I could throw the Warriors back in yeah. later on. Right. No. It's, it's what do you think right yeah. now. Right now. Celtics are playing good. Celtics I didn't are realize good they're playing. I did add them to my list this week. Okay, there we go. So I now have ten teams. I wanted to, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to shorten it, but I was like, okay, I just I can't make too many crazy judgments yet. But I did add them to the list. So I'm still Suns and Bucks at number one and two. I flip flopped the Sixers. They're up to number three for me, and I dropped the Heat to number four. I'm a little prisoner of the moment because the Sixers did beat the Heat yesterday without Embiid and Harden, which oh, is okay. kind of yeah, you could that's... you could question my yeah. assessment on that, but. This is, uh, for, for me, this is still a work in progress. Right, right. Work in progress. I still have the Warriors at five, which I could have dropped them, but I don't want to go crazy just because of injuries. And the I Warriors just, did just lose tonight to the... To the uh, Magic. <laughs> yeah, okay, just making sure. Yeah, they blew that big time. They also blew the game to the Spurs, which we talked about, which was a bad... That's a, that's a bad Yeah, loss. they were they were just barking at the refs all game long, which they need to... Draymond needs to chill the fuck Draymond out. needs to... <laughs> but... You know, he's staying true to himself, and you can't, you know, it's yeah, just, it's yeah, who he is. It's, it's who he is. is. It's, it's who he is. No question about it. Uh, Grizzlies still at six. Nets, I believe I moved up to seven. I got the Celtics at eight. And like uh, like you, we, we both like the way they're playing right now. Mm -hmm. Beating good teams. I dropped the Nuggets way down to nine. They haven't played as well lately. They got blown up by the Celtics recently as well. Yeah. And then Jazz are hanging on at number ten. Right. And we'll talk about why I have the Jazz at ten here in a moment. Um... Because our focus today is going to be the Jazz, Mavericks, and Nuggets. I like how you skipped the Timberwolves. Well, the Nuggets actually did bounce back ahead of the Timberwolves. Oh, uh, okay. But the Timberwolves, we, okay. we will get to, I think, maybe in the very last week before the gotcha. Mavericks. Gotcha, gotcha, um, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, we'll do the, the next three teams yes. in the East next week. Uh, but yeah, today is the Jazz, Mavs, and the Nuggets. Um, so why I can't yet get rid of Utah off my list is because they are the, the best rated offense in the NBA right now, and that's based on uh, points per possession. Okay. Um, and, I mean, offense is kind of key these days. <laughs> you got to have a good defense, too. They do have a good yes. defense. But having the number one offense, I think you can't, you can't blink at that. And they shoot the three ball really well. I know Joe Ingles was a big loss, but, that, I mean, it hasn't, they haven't really skipped a beat. Yeah. And they're right on the Warriors' tail now for that yeah. number three seed. Obviously, they have Donovan Mitchell, Rudy Gobert, mm -hmm. Mike Connolly. Yeah, really, really nice yeah. trio of guys. None of them are superstars, but no. very good players. Uh, their chances of winning to me, I'm gonna say it's possible. I don't, I, I just can't, I can't imagine it. Yeah, it's hard for me to imagine yeah, it. Yeah, I think a lot of things would have to go right, and maybe wrong for other teams. Just you... because the conference right now doesn't scare me. Right. Like I, I would like their chances beside to, with anybody probably besides the Suns. Right. I think the Suns have clearly got to that point where they're they're, they're pretty damn good. On. Yeah. I think I think about the matchup though with them versus the Suns. And if they just had a few good games, mm -hmm. they could. I think they could beat the Suns. Like they could yeah. match. Like I mean, you got Aiden yeah. and Gobert. Yeah. Uh, Mitchell and Booker. I, I obviously we think Booker's probably better than Mitchell on average, but both yeah. pretty similar players. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's. 
And then it, I, I mean, everyone likes CP3 a lot because he's just the master floor general. Oh my God. But Mike Conley's not a bad point guard at all. No, he's not. So, I mean, the, re the way the rest of the team fills out, I think I like the Suns a little bit better. Like, they're, they're role players, but Jazz are pretty damn good. Yeah. So my question's for the Jazz. I only have two for the Jazz this week. Two. It's hard for me to think of questions, yeah. Yeah. So no, that's fine. So do, do you think Donovan Mitchell needs another big-time score or player on the offensive side to win the championship? I, I think an like, interesting... Like a true number two. Right. An, an interesting thing that they could think about doing is a Conley and Gobert package for another superstar. What do you think about that? Like, I don't know who that superstar would be. I mean, like, I, and, I would... And who wants to go to Utah? Like, hey, it's, it's not a big market. If you, if you win, that's it what is what it is. Right. And some people say that Salt Lake City is an awesome city, so... I believe it. So I'll throw that out there as well. Okay. Um, but but I, I'm with you, though. But, Utah but, but, it's, but it's not like going to New York right. or Miami. I, I, I totally understand that. I'm sure a lot of basketball or, players you know, think LA, similar. you know what I mean? Right. Um, and I think... No, never mind. But, yeah, I, I, I think maybe... I, it's, hard to, it's, it's hard with this team. They've, they've been very good. Yeah. Yeah, they still... I do not believe they've been to a conference championship that I know of, or that I can think of. Which, my next question is... Does their past history of being underwhelming make them not as a threat to win the championship? I think people probably still look at them as like, okay, they're they're cute, but they're not, exactly. they're not that good. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. They're, they're cute. Yeah. But do we but really trust them? I think they do have the potential to get to a conference championship based on especially this year, based on like what we're seeing with the other teams. I mean, the Grizzlies are pretty fun to watch, but yeah. who knows what, what that young team is gonna do in the playoffs. Yeah, exactly. Who talks um, about that? So I think they got it. They, their window is there, and then if you play the Suns, you just see what happens. They, I wouldn't expect them to beat them, but mm -hmm. they could. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, where you you don't have the Jazz on your list, but you don't, you, there's a lot of teams that you don't have on your list. That yeah, I do. I'm, I'm keeping it short, <coughs> yeah. short and sweet. Yeah, that's fair. I no, I just I can't. I think them. I know. I know. You know, this season's different than past seasons. But it is. I just don't, it is unique. I, I feel like. I just. I, I can't. I can't see it. You know. No, it's fair. If that I mean, makes any, some, that make something, any sense. something that you don't, and I know, and I know that I've you said haven't that seen with, is hard to see. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I know I've said that with a lot of teams that we yeah. talk about. Yeah. Including, including the next team that we're about to talk about. Yeah. Dallas, very interesting team. Dallas has obviously they got rid of Porzingis, which is kind of a shocker. Yeah. But I think it was pretty clear that wasn't working. No. Um, and they they played pretty well since they they got rid of him actually, mm -hmm. which is. Um, which I mean, they got Din Dinwiddie in in uh, in return, which is a, he's a nice player. He wasn't having a good year, but he's a nice player. The only key players I have for this team is clearly it's I mean it's Luca. Luca Doncic. Luca's it's, a fucking it's, man. It's the Luca show. Yeah, and that's why I give them a low chance of winning because it's Luca. It's too Luca dependent. That's that's my fear as well. And that's also my question: Are they too Luca dependent? They absolutely yes, are. They are. I think. Uh, so the, he leads the team in points, rebounds, and assists. Does he really yes. rebounds? That's pretty crazy. Uh, they have a they have a kind of interesting lineup. I mean, they they go with uh, with Powell at the five, mm. who's a pretty lean and smaller yeah. five. But that's kind of the way the NBA is these days, and it's been working really well for them. Um, one thing I find interesting about this team and, and why they could be a threat to a team that you think is better than them in the playoffs is that they play the slowest pace in the league, which would be a more comfortable scenario in the playoffs. Like yeah. teams that are used to playing fast and yeah. less. Less half court ball. Like if like if they played the Grizzlies, I think they could they could sneak up on the Grizzlies. And that's something that I've always noticed about Luca watching him is he does he, he yeah, that's what I love that's what I love about him is he he plays his game. Yeah. You know he, he'll shoot the long threes and he'll miss. Yeah. Which is something yeah, he likes to work on. Kind of ugly sometimes. But he'll you know he'll kind of just like, kind of run around a little bit and. Yeah. And sometimes I think how slow he plays throws defenders yeah. up. Kind of reminds me of Kawhi Leonard in a sense. Just yeah. Plays his game. Gets to his spots. Does not, does not care what you're trying to do to him. He's yeah. going to play his game. He's going to get his shot off. Yeah, he's he's a very unique player. A lot of people think he's good, you know, the best player in the league. I, I'm not ready to say that. No. I don't think he's athletic enough to, to, to say that. But he, he needs to lose that, that weight. He's he like, seems like he has gotten his, uh, his act together. You know, yeah. fitness wise, in the second half of the year, he still looks pretty doughy. Though. No, he definitely yeah. is. So, yeah. That's just how he is. Yeah, yeah. could be some, some baby fat. <laughs> yeah, baby fat. He's only what? He's only like twenty two. Yeah, he's he's still young. He's got a long way to like, go. Like, what do you think? Like, what are the chances of winning? 
not high. I just I can't see them winning more than one series. I really can't. They're they're a good team, but not great. I think this offseason is going to be interesting for them because they got to they got to pair him with somebody that will work with him. Yeah, Luca that is of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, uh, Denver. Or unless you have another question about that, Dallas. And the only one I could think of was I don't I don't want to st- I don't want to stretch on the question. No, I no, think, you're fine. I think too Luca dependent. Right. Yeah. Or, or are they too Luca dependent? Yeah. Which, it's an obvious one, but yes, they are. Denver. Denver is such an interesting team. I, I don't know what to make of them. Obviously, they're missing some good players yeah. uh, with Murray and Porter Jr. out. Chances of winning, to me, very low because they need... They need those guys. They need Murray. Yeah, they do. definitely Murray. Porter Jr. is... is Porter yeah. Jr. is nice. Yeah, he's a very good when player. When he's out there. Yeah. When he's out there. Um, one thing that's interesting about this team and why they could, could be in, you know, very dangerous in the playoffs... They have the best field goal percentage at the rim, essentially, in the league. Which, actually, all of these teams that we're talking about right now are, like, top four. Um, but they are number one inside three feet. I mean, a lot of that has to do with Jokic. Jokic, yeah. Jokic dominating smaller guys down low, plus his playmaking ability and setting up, you know, easy, easy Talking about another guy who plays his own game. Right. Jokic is fucking amazing. He's he's, he's, al- some, he's something different. He's also doughy. Yes. But he also just makes it work. He is something different. These international guys just... Yeah. They, they're different, and he's he's added a chippy little edge to himself over the last couple of years too, which I, I I like, and it's I think it's good for the playoffs. His ba- his big bros are finally like, bro, yeah. you know, bulk up, you know, right. don't want to push you around like that. Um, I mean, God, out of these three teams, who who's has has the best player? I mean, I think it'd probably be between Luca and, and Jokic, but yeah, um, it's probably. Hmm. I think I go Jokic because he can the, the way the game is played now, he can. Dominate the smaller teams, you know. You could debate too. You know, the NBA now is such a long range game that what Jokic is doing is just kind of off the off the beaten path, right? And, and, it, and he makes it work. Yeah, I think that's kind of similar with what Embiid does for the for the Sixers. Yeah. He doesn't do the, all the other things that Jokic does, like passing the ball. Yeah. But because we're not going to see guys, I mean, maybe we will, but see guys dominate like Shaq. You know, what I mean? it's it's not that kind of game anymore. Exactly. Yeah. So I think it's yeah what you say about. And beat the same way how Jokic does is yeah. you know they can shoot the three but they also they throw, throw you off by that down low game right. they got yeah they got I mean yeah twenty post touches a game at least Jokic is averaging twenty six points thirteen rebounds and eight assists right <laughs> he's almost averaging a triple double that's pretty pretty wild yeah he's he's awesome I mean yeah I think uh, they they do have nice complimentary players but they're, they're going to need Murray and yeah. and and Porter Jr. I'm, sure. I'm not I'm not feeling it this year. They need to be healthy next year. Right, because it, it would be tough to just throw those guys into the mix at the start of the playoffs. So I think I had uh, I think I had the Nuggets high, didn't I? From the beginning of the season? Yeah, I think I might have. I don't know if I... I don't think I did write it down. I might not have. But uh, the questions I had for the Nuggets, for you, are... This one's kind of obvious, but you know, the loss of Murray is it too much to overcome. I mean, if he doesn't play, yes, absolutely. I mean, if he does, I think it's still him not being in shape would be a, a big factor. So Jokic is in the MVP talk, right? Right. Do you think he's deserving of it? I mean, I told you the stats. They're yeah. awesome. Yep. But they are the seventh seed. He's kind of pulling like what the, what Westbrook did when he grabbed a triple-double. Yeah. That no, was like I'm, a seven or eight seed. Yeah. The thing that Jokic, he's just... He's, he's so consistent. Like, he just... like. The, the reason I didn't like Westbrook is he's just like he's out of control player, you know? Mm-hmm. And why I don't feel like he was tr- a true MVP. I think you could really make that case for, like, if, if you, based on what the roster they have right now with the injuries and everything, if you took a Jokic off that team, yeah. they're, they're bottom three team in the West, probably. Do you think they can win two playoff series? I said one or two. I think one is easier to answer. One is realistic. Two. The funny thing is these three teams we're talking about today... Two of them are going to match up in the first round. I think that's almost a lock. Okay. Um, so, I think I like them better than Dallas in a in a playoff series. Just because I, I don't I think they don't have anyone who can defend Jokic. I also think, you know, the playing in the altitude as a, an opponent, it's, it's tough. It's, it's really it's tough. It's an advantage. Yeah. It's an advantage for the Nuggets. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah. I think winning two is going to be tough if they don't have their guns blazing and they're not rolling on offense, but. I think they could definitely win one. I do like Jokic. I always make the joke that the Kings should have drafted Luka, which they should have. Yeah. But Jokic, he's, well, he's one of those guys that's kind of like Matt Ryan. He's hard to hate. Yeah. And 
he's just he does his own thing, man. He just he's pretty special. Just, he's fun to watch. I mean, it's like <laughs> unorthodox as his game is, he's pretty fun to watch. Yeah. I love how he he like plays point guard sometimes. Like he'll he'll dribble the ball at the court. And I think after this podcast is over, we're gonna be watching the Nuggets. Nuggets and the Eclipse. Right? The Eclipse. Yeah, it'll be fun. So. All right. I think that's all we got. We pretty much already answered these questions that I had, but. Yeah. Yep. Um, next week, I think we're gonna be talking about the Celtics, who are rising fast. Um, I think we might throw the Bulls and the Cavs in there as well. Okay. Maybe Toronto. Who knows. Um, and then we'll talk about the, uh, the fringe contenders probably in our last week before the regular yes. season. And we'll do a little, uh, little postseason uh, preview as well. Which will, be a, which will be a lot more fun yes. to talk about. Yep. MLB Talk, you have some somewhat big news. Yeah, so we got a name for the new podcast, which I believe I'm going to do the first episode this Friday. You are. Yeah, I'm going to record it on Friday and post it on Friday. It's going to be the goal. Uh, it is going to be called... Thank you, Gage, for this name. Fourth out. <laughs> I said as a joke, you liked it, so I'm glad you liked it. I think it's got a good little... Because uh, yeah. I wanted something short and sweet, mm-hmm. and just like the episodes are going to be short and sweet. Yes. Uh, so I think that, that works perfectly, and it was you know creative enough uh, to not be boring, like the ones I thought of. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're going with fourth it definitely out. Was, it definitely wasn't the, one, like, the ones that I came up with. It wasn't the one that I thought you were going to pick. Yeah. No, I, I really wanted something simple. I didn't want... Yeah. I want to go crazy. I didn't really want my name to be associated with it. Are you gonna be? Are you gonna call it fourth out or the fourth out? I guess you could. I think. I think. I'm like not, how you? How you gonna present it? On like the like on that's Spotify. A, that's right? a, that's gonna be a mystery for the. For the okay. Fans. <laughs> All right. I like it. But I, I kind of feel like. I'm I'm really torn on on yeah. whether it's the fourth out or fourth out. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll figure it. Out. Yeah. Fourth out's probably better. We'll see. So if you're listening to this, listen to fourth out. Right. This upcoming probably Saturday. Yes. Well, I'll have it. I'll have it up, up uh, probably by Friday afternoon at the latest. So, fuck yeah, yeah. I'll be at lunch. There Let's you go. go. <laughs> uh, and what to look forward to on this week's podcast? Freddie Freeman to the Dodgers. We're gonna talk about that. Yeah. Carlos Correa to the Twins. Chris Bryant to the Rockies. And Trevor Story going to the Red Sox. I know talking about free agency is not super exciting, but yes. we're gonna break down what this means to those teams. And we're gonna talk about the A's rebuild. It's really more, more of a a shutdown, <laughs> but the A's rebuild, and we're going to talk about the Giants too, because it's going to be, not gonna, I don't want to say it's going to be overly focused on the Giants, but we're going to talk about the Giants on almost every episode, yeah. um, and we're going to talk about what uh, offseason moves they've made, and what else they need to do. And this might come, this kind of news of you starting your own podcast might be a bummer for fans, or baseball fans who listen to us, Yeah, but that just means you got to, you know... Listen to Fourth Out. That's right. on the just, IS, that, that's on the ISR network. Right. It's and gonna be an extension of the yeah, Talks Good yeah, Sports Club. I just won't be drunk. Yeah, the ISR <laughs> the ISR network, and you gotta just yeah. listen to him. Yeah. It's, it's, and, we'll, and we will talk about baseball. Yeah, a, a little, little bit. Yeah, we'll we'll have you know we'll we'll do a little uh, Giants you know updates here and there and, and whatnot and talk about the big news. Yeah. Um, I mean, fucking Freddie Freeman to the Dodgers. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm gonna t- I'm gonna tell you this right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna have some kind of segment on why it's not as big of a deal as Giants fans want to think it is. <laughs> I'm sold. I'm uh, listening. <laughs> I am listening now. I think this uh, well, Chris Bryant to the Rockies is interesting, but Carlos Correa to the Twins is very. That was your. It's a beard scratcher. Wasn't that your World Series pick last year? Or was that mine? That was you. I had the White Sox go in the World Series and losing to the Dodgers. Ah, uh, that's right. I think I already right now have my World Series two teams. Okay. We'll talk about it after. Yep. I wonder if you have the same two teams. I haven't thought too deep on it yet, but I think I probably have an idea who, who I got going. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and we could do uh, just like simple predictions on, on the next, or the, whatever is going to be the last episode before the season starts. Yeah. Which might be next week. Hmm. Mm, might be next week. I got to say, watching, watching spring training baseball, it's, hearing John Miller, crew and Kai. Yeah. Uh, well, was Creek on there yesterday? Or, or, or me and Kuiper on there? You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, but I know or, Dave, Dave, uh, was Dave, calling, Dave, Fleming. Dave Fleming was calling the game. It's just, it's just nice. I, mean, I hear those guys almost every day on like KMBR because Murphy Mack always right. have them on. Have they been having Dwayne Kuiper on? Because I know he's got his health issues. Though. They've, Dave ha- they've had... Uh, Kruk on more. Kruk on more, yeah. Gotcha. But I have heard Kuiper within the last couple weeks. So it's nice to hear. I love Dwayne. He's the man. Yeah. I almost wanted to name the, the podcast High Drives. After his famous call, like high drive, like yeah. field out of here. But it was taken. No, uh-huh. um, I just 
Decided that wasn't the one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Fourth out. Fourth out. I gotta that's, say, that's it. Pretty, pretty honored you picked my. I think it's fitting. It's you know, because there's clearly not four outs in baseball. There should be. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you want to talk about any other baseball stuff? Uh, yes, Jock Peterson. He's coming to the Giants. Which you'll talk about. Yep. Um, over under. Three splash hits in McCovey Cove for Jock Peterson. Ooh. Splash hits are not a gimme, so I'm going to go exactly three. Am I allowed to do that? You can always go. Do you want to go two and a half or three and a half? I think it's easier if you do that because then I can okay, just pick I'll, one or the other. Uh, we'll do, I'll do two and a half. Two and a half. I'm going to go over. Okay. He's hitting three. Okay. Because I really want to say he's going to hit like 17, but. <laughs> <laughs> he's not very, he's not, he's not very bummed. <laughs> uh. But I'm excited for Josh. It's gonna be weird. It's, it's just you know, you you know, you know how much shit I've heard you, you talk specifically about Josh Peterson. <laughs> oh, he's a total deep bag. <laughs> but I think the Giants kind of need one of those little yeah. edgy guys on the on the team. I keep hearing people say, "Don't bring the pearls, bro. It's the city. Bring them pearls." Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm here for. I'm, it. I'm here for. Them. I like. Dang. Gotta have some flair. Yes. Yeah. Even if even if you think it's two thousands lame, it's it's in. <laughs> Jock is making it in again. I, and I didn't know Jock. I think grew up a Giants fan. He's like oh, yeah, he's from Palo Alto. Yeah. Did you know the story? My dad uh, went I to Palo Alto yes. High School, and uh, Jock Peterson's grandfather was a PE teacher when my dad was in high school at uh, at Pally High. And my dad was a teacher <laughs> yeah. assistant for for Jock's dad. That's cool. And Jock's or sorry, Jock's grandfather. Jock's dad had a cup of uh, coffee in, in Major League Baseball. I think he played for the Dodgers actually. Really? Yeah. Wow. But uh, yeah. So me and Jock, we're super tight. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have a connection. Yes. There's a connection. Very, very, very small connection. He's also wearing number 23. He's stealing... KB's number? KB's number. That's all right. He was short-lived. Short-lived. I agree. I hope no one's sad about Chris Bryant not being a giant, because I'm really not. Yeah. As much as I liked him, and it was cool that it came, we can live without him. Yeah. Yeah. We might not win 107 games... That is not happening. I will tell you that right now. Giants fans don't get excited about 107 yes. wins again. What time is it? It's time for the last call. Last call. Speaking of the Giants, we got uh, on the table today. Who, who do you got on your left uh, side? I got Golden Boy Brandon Crawford. <laughs> yes, sir. And Gold, I got the Golden Gnome. I got the Nutcracker, Mr. Madison Bumgarner over here. Yeah. It is a Nutcracker bobble, or not even a bobble. It's just a Nutcracker figurine yeah. or whatever. Just like in Game Seven, you crack the, cracking crack the, the nuts. Crack the nuts of the Royals fans <laughs> in the stands. <laughs> so, if you want to hear my story about Brandon Crawford, yeah, say. Here. So this gnome, there was so they were give giveaways at a Giants Tigers game that I think me, James, and maybe Yoshi went to. Okay. Can't remember exactly who was there. Walking out of the stadium. We didn't. We didn't get there in time to get one. One and they had like they actually had select ones of the gold ones, but most of them were just regular yeah. colored. And well, I think yeah, the gold ones were. But it was like one in like every thousand. Or something, something like that. that. Yeah, know. very few of them. Which I, mean, I would have rather honestly had a normal looking one, but it's, it's kind of fun yeah. too. But no, I think this is cooler. Like I'd, I'd rather have this one. So we're walking out and out of the stadium after the game. Dutter just whooped the Giants' ass. What's <laughs> shocking? Oh, was it? Oh, they won. Was it bad? It was probably back in like 2019 when the Dodgers were at their peak. Yeah. And the Giants were at their rock bottom. Um, this, I, so we didn't get one. And I'm like, I would say this Dodger fan walking with one in his hand is unboxed. And I'm like, I tried, I was like begging him for it. And he wouldn't give it to me at first. And then finally, I don't know what made him give in, but he finally gave it to me. Didn't he say he wanted to sell it on eBay? Was, he's like, I, I think he said some. Something sarcastic, like, I'll, I'll just throw it in the bay or something like that. Because we're walking on the yeah. on the walk or whatever. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I'd rather just throw it away or throw it in the bay. Yeah. And uh, he eventually gave it to me. And I told him, I was like, you're you're my favorite Dodger fan ever. <laughs> That's cool. And, of course, the one that you open up is the gold one. The yeah, I know. I didn't, I didn't know because he didn't say on the box if it was a gold yeah. one or not. I bet you when I first saw this, I was like, dude, this is, like, not the normal shit. It's like you're, one in a thousand. You're right. <laughs> so that's my story. So you're trying to tell me Dodger fans aren't that bad. Oh, no, that guy was still an asshole, but... <laughs> what jersey was he wearing, do you remember? Oh, yeah, I don't know. I can't remember. Probably something stupid. 
Adrian Gonzalez. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, fuck that guy. That guy did not like that guy at all. Dude. He was the epitome of the Dodgers. Oh, he destroyed Just the Giants. Easily team. hateable. He destroyed. Yeah. Every big hit he could have against the Giants, he did. Mm-hmm. It was pretty classic just watching him and Javier Lopez. You, you could book it. Seventh or eighth inning, they're, <laughs> they're going to be facing each other. You all, we're also running out of uh, ball. I know. Ideas. We might need to work into the Carl's Jr. set pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> we're just get some, might need to find some new ornaments. We'll see. Maybe start putting some baseballs there. We could put some baseballs up. I called the All Star Game one. Okay. I wish I would have went to the All Star Game back in. I know season. that would have been it would have been too easy. I mean, fuck. We saw Ichiro hit that inside the park home run. Right, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I want to say Alfonso Soriano hit the hit the first opposite field home run as a right handed hitter. No, I take that back. I'm not you mean right. you think? Of Did he hit one in the water? I can't remember. Or maybe he was really close. He might have been. Yeah. Because no, I don't think anyone in like a regular season game has hit an opposite field I splash. I, it. Posey got really close last year. If you would hit the pillar, hit right. one like the yeah, it, it, it would have been nice to see what what where it would have gone. Yeah, which would have been fitting for his last right last season. season. All right, let's let's actually get in the last call here. Yes, uh, Sal wanted us to mention this. <laughs> uh, his his boys they got rocked in El Clasico. <laughs> Four <laughs> nil. Four nil. Barcelona over Real Madrid. Ooh. Eek. Boy, sorry, bud. Sorry about it. Yep, didn't watch. Don't I know how it really went down. Not I actually did see the highlights, but I mean, do you take the day off for this one too? Or I'm not thinking so. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sure he's glad he did. <laughs> what you got? I actually have uh, F1. F1, yeah. Season the season delayed. has started. Also, did you watch the race? Uh, no, no, I know. Um, so McLaren. They have a Google sponsor, Google mm-hmm. Chrome. Yeah. And inside their, their tires, or like inside, like on the rims, I guess you could say, sure. is the Google Chrome logo. Yeah. And I really like this. Like, I'll show it to you. Okay, so it's it's the circle. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 And I really like this. That is I, 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 love, I love good product placement. Yeah. I think it's really cool. But it could be a bad omen because McLaren both finished both 14 and 15. Eek. So maybe they got to stop with the Google Chrome. Who knows? <laughs> Probably too late now. Yeah. They're signed up. Yeah, no kidding. <clears throat> I, I just thought that was cool, though. Yeah. You know. I thought it was interesting that Ferrari dominated. They're fast as hell. Mm-hmm. Um, Mercedes, like, obviously, Lewis and, and uh, George Russell, they finished 3 4, but they kind of snuck their way into that. Uh, and Red Bull had some major issues, but they still seem like they're fast. So it's good. It should be yeah. an interesting season. Also, we talked about last week Joe Buck, Troy Aikman are. Officially, ESPN a part of night. ESPN Monday Night Football. Wow, I kind of wonder like that can't be their only job. Like, I gotta think Joe, at least Joe Buck is gonna have some kind of other contract. Well, we talked about it earlier. Alan, he's done. I'm pretty sure he World they, Series. Pretty sure they it's cut like, him from Fox, which is like wow. That's pretty crazy. Like he's he was been, Mr. Fox. He was on. He's he's in the World Series for probably 20 years. I want to say he probably was doing it in the late 90s. Yeah, yeah. At least the early 2000s. So Troy Aikman. As a player, his total NFL earnings were $55 million. Or he's making more than that. He's no. making $90 million, I think, in this four-year deal Jeez. with ESPN. That's a good contract. I'm glad that ESPN got four years out of him. Or I think it's, I think it's, yeah, I think it's probably four. Yeah. That's, I mean, you think Troy Quinn ever thought he would make more, like, almost double the money that he made playing football? I mean, yeah, just the way that money in sports has just gone out of this world. In the I mean, last... I, know, I know there's inflation and all that. Yeah. I'm sure 55 million in the 90s was. But yeah, I think it's gone. It's it's gone more than you would. The ratio is, is out of proportion here. Yes. Also, some more on the funny side. You see Jake Paul offered Kanye West and Pete Davidson $60 million to box each other. <laughs> <laughs> Pete Davidson. I would love to see that. Pete Davidson, a.k.a. Skeet Davidson. <laughs> He'd probably get his shit rocked by Kanye. <laughs> uh, if you guys don't know what's up with uh, Skeet and Kanye, look it up. I'm not yeah. going to explain it. No, it's not worth it, but so, it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> I would pay, I usually don't pay for pay-per-view fights. But that would be so but funny. But I might watch. pay hard dollars. The thing is, like, there's, they're, they're, I mean... They're gonna. Would you think they would train like a lot for it? 
That's what I want to know. I think <laughs> I would rather do just like no training, just step into the ring. I think right now until rip. Kanye sixty million to fight him, however you know, box right. Kanye's walking in right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. It's like I get to take a swing at this fool. <laughs> and Pete Davidson's like you know six four, you know, buck twenty. Yeah, that's one of the things he will have on Kanye. He's got that. He's gonna have that lanky reach. <laughs> Who you got in that fight? I think I'm taking Kanye. Kanye's pissed. I'm, I'm taking Kanye. Yeah, I think he's got more. Yeah, a little more anger behind yeah. it. Yeah. It's, it's Kanye for sure. Yeah. Kanye would be like Mike Tyson start biting ears off and shit. <laughs> you, he would definitely do some dirty shit if he had to. But I kind of feel like he might just stun him early in the early in the fight. <laughs> I would. I think I would pay money to watch that. I absolutely. That would. Well, that would be good. I wouldn't pay more than like. Seventy five dollars, but I would you know, seventy five. Seventy five. Yeah, I think at a, a reasonable price would be fifty bucks. <coughs> That'll be fucking please hilarious. make it happen. Please make it happen. Sixty million. <laughs> That's a lot of fucking money. I mean, those guys have plenty of money, but I bet that would mean more to Pete Davidson though. Well, Connie's Connie's a billionaire. Yeah, or he's worth a billion dollars. Right. So that was obvious. I mean, yeah, that was Pete Davidson. I'd be like, 60 million, like, up I mean, front? Yeah. I mean, you can knock me out. It's probably not the, yeah. the most embarrassing thing that's happened to him. Because Pete Davidson seemed like, you know what? He can knock me out. I get 60 million and I'm still fucking his wife. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, it's a win, win, win for me. What are you talking about? Come on. What if he made the stakes that uh, uh, Kanye gets Kim back if he wins? <laughs> We're not treating Dan. We're not treating women like fucking pieces you're, of meat on this show. Uh, I got a couple more things. Um, <laughs> did you see my boy LeBron James? I thought we were gonna get through one episode without no. mentioning Tom Brady's and John T- LeBron James' name. Just one. I mean, LeBron James passed Karl Malone for second most points in a career all time. That's got to be someone impressive to you. You, my friend. Good job, Bron. Kareem, he's coming for you. He is coming. He's coming. He's gonna Kareem. do it. He's coming. Right now, he's at thirty-six, nine, and some change. Mm-hmm. Green's at 38, 3 and some change. Oh, that's going to happen next year, probably. Yeah. Uh, yeah, easily. I think you could score 2,000 points, you know, if you're averaging about 25. I mean, I, you, don't, you didn't think I was going to mention this? <laughs> I, I, you didn't think I was going to I actually happen? didn't even know what happened. You, what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. I just knew he, he yammed on his boy, Kevin Love. Dude, that was nasty. That was a baptism. <laughs> I mean, you're telling me Kevin Love had the stop on Steph Curry in that game seven. <laughs> and LeBron does that to him. It's not fair. It's not fair. Not fair. Cold world, cold world. Last but not least, John Clayton. I know. Died at age 67. It says after a brief illness. I don't know what that means. That's tough. So that's, a, that's a quick snap. And he was an NFL insider, worked for ESPN as well. I guess I didn't realize that we haven't seen him on TV in a long time. Yeah. He, as you said in a couple group chats, is most known for his... The Sports Center commercial. This is Sports Center commercial when he, uh... Fucking... He's like, Mom, dub my segment! Yeah. And, and he's he got the Slayer shirt on. The Slayer shirt on. He has, <laughs> like, the Chinese food in his bed. Like, the, the, yeah, the whole thing is he, uh... You know, he's all clean cut for the thing. Right. He has, like, the half, the sh- the half shirt on, the half, <laughs> yeah. like, nice, uh... Tie on. Rips it off, and he has long hair after it. You right, know what I mean? right. If you I, haven't seen, I'm I'm botching the fuck out of yeah. what this is. But if you haven't seen it, go see it. I didn't realize that that commercial like was developed on the the joke that he actually had long hair and he was always hiding it. Oh really? Yeah. Oh okay. I, 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 yeah. I learned that just recently. But if you if you if you don't know what I'm talking about, look up yeah. John Clayton. Sports Center. This is or yeah, Sports Center commercial on top of it's pretty funny. Yeah. For me, it was funny now, funny then because you know. I, I'm not a huge Slayer fan, but yeah. <laughs> the fact that they had like Slayer, he was like eating Chinese food in his bed too, yeah. you know. And it's totally off, like based from what you would expect from oh. him, like because he was a consummate professional. Yeah, and just he definitely had a, a nerdy, you know, vibe to him. If yes, you will. Oh, for sure. <laughs> so yeah, it's pretty funny. Um, my last, very last thing: Sharks have extended Tomas Hurdle for eight more seasons. He's going to be in Teal for a long time. How old is he right now? He's uh, 28, I believe. Mm. And I guess. People play. Yeah, hockey, hockey players can go for a while. I mean, Brent Burns is like 37. <clears throat> Being in San Jose for the next eight years when you're rich, a lot of it's not bad. Yeah, and a lot of I mean, he got 65 million dollars, I believe, on this contract. A lot of people would be like, "Why are the Sharks doing this?" Because they're in a rebuild. But I, I, I kind of like it. I like 
Hurdle, he's been a great player for the Sharks, and keep him around. Uh, we got 30 seconds. What do you got? I think that's it. Um, we good? We good? Yep. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, so fourth out coming up on Friday. Are we, getting, are we, are we getting t-shirts soon? Nah, uh, we'll, we'll probably wait on that. See, <laughs> see, what the, see how much love it gets, and then we'll decide. Uh, thank you all for tuning in, watching, listening. Listen to the fourth out. Listen to the fourth out. We'll see you next week. Peace.